name is Charles Houghton. I'm an attorney here in Colorado Springs, been an, an attorney here in Colorado Springs uh, for almost uh, 29 years now. Um, I was sat on the City of Colorado Springs, I was appointed to be on the City of Colorado Springs Medical Marijuana Task Force about five years ago. Uh, the only member that remains from that set council is uh, Council Member Martin. Um, at any rate, uh, before, the count, before we start hearing any testimony, I did not want to ra uh, waive a jurisdictional issue, and that is we don't believe that the appeal should be heard at all. Uh, the reason being is we don't think that the appeal was properly brought. The reason being is, is that in order for an appeal to be brought under 7.5.906B, it has to be brought by a person uh, and it has to be uh, brought by a person whose action was, where the action of the, of the planning commission in this case was adverse to the person themselves. Uh, so what you're basically saying is, is that this was adverse to a person. We have to figure out who the person is. If you look at the notice of appeal, the person that is set forth in the, in the notice of appeal is City of Colorado Springs Administration. There is no such legal entity. Uh, your city attorney itself, in pending litigation with me, uh, raised the issue that I couldn't sue the city of Colorado Springs Police Department separate from uh, the city itself uh, because it's the, the city, uh, the CSPD must be dismissed from this action because it's not a legal entity that may be sued. And that's Stump v. Gates 777 F SUP uh, 808. Colorado, a District of Colorado Federal District Court case. Um, the, C, the court goes on to say the CSPD is merely a vehicle through which the government of C, the city government fulfills its policing functions and is not a proper defendant. Um, if it is not a legal entity, the city administration, then it has no standing whatsoever to bring this appeal. Uh, that's the first thing. The other thing is, is that pursuant to your own statute 7.5104, uh, the manager of community development um, has jurisdiction over the following matters, and that is uh, similar use determinations, which is going to be key to this, and interpretation and decisions outlined throughout this code, which presumably we're going to be talking about. The only problem is, is that that jurisdiction only applies unless appeal to the planning commission and city council. The minute the appeal was made to the Planning Commission, Mr. Wysocki lost any authority he had whatsoever to bring this action. Uh, and so we would like to have the summary determination right now that this, this particular appeal uh, cannot move forward because a person under the terms of your own statute did not bring it. Okay. We'll ask for Mr. Andrews to respond. Uh, well, I think we would like to hear from uh, Council for the City rebuttal argument for that, Mr. Florzak or uh, Ms. Burgess? Yes. Um, good afternoon, City Council members, City Council President King, um, President Pro Tem Bennett, Bethany Burgess here on behalf of the City Administration and the City Planning Department. It would be our position that um, this appeal has been filed by the, the City Planning Director, who is a person um, capable of bringing an appeal under the City Zoning Code. And... Um, the zoning code does not preclude the city administration through its zoning official from bringing an appeal. Okay, Dave, you wanna? We also, uh, in, in our code, the, the city council is uh, uh, the body of last resort which determines the, uh, the meaning of the planning and zoning regulations and uh, so the, the council's opinion on uh, what constitutes a person for purposes of bringing the appeal um, is, is within your uh, uh, ability to determine. Okay. 
Uh, discussion? I guess we need to, uh, do we need, Council Member Knight? This is not the first time that uh, the city has appealed a ruling by the uh, um, Planning Commission. Isn't that correct? Has another appeal has been made? So have we already set precedents? I believe there was a staff-initiated, administration-initiated appeal of Planning Commission action a number of years ago, but not in the recent uh, recent months. Okay, because I was uh, talking with a member of the Planning Commission, and he just said that at, uh, during the last council, it was kind of set up that if there is an appeal by the city of a Planning Commission ruling, then the commissioners would have a right to talk. Uh, and, and so I know that, you know, that discussion went on, so it was more of a process whether they would be, you know, be given a chance to, to present at such a hearing also, since they're upholding their, their decision, which differed in staff. So I believe, I may, that uh, commissioner is uh, referring to if the staff's recommendation was uh, different than the action of the city council. Uh, and the matter would have to be heard by the city council regardless, not on appeal, but let's say a zone change, um, that uh, the planning, a representative of the planning commission would present the commission's case before the council if staff's recommendation was different. Um, so that is not the same as a, as administration filing or the planning director filing an appeal of that action. So uh, since December of 2012, we had not had any um, appeals filed by the planning director of the, of the planning commission action. Mr. Knight, I, I have some additional information on that. Uh, um, I am informed that we have indeed had uh, appeals that have been filed by uh, city departments in the past um, we also have some guidance uh, it's not in the zoning code but uh, in the city code itself in 7 dash um, or excuse me in city code 1.1.106 1 .1 and it defines a person as any individual firm company partnership sole proprietorship association group or society including the United States and the state of Colorado and any agencies districts commissions and political subdivision created by or pursuant to state or federal law, so that would include a home rule city. Uh, so that may provide some guidance to you. If I may, may just go ahead address respond. those two issues briefly. Sure. Uh, number one, there's no evidence whatsoever before you that this issue was raised uh, at any of the prior appeals. So their presidential value is no value whatsoever. Uh, we don't have a ruling that says that they considered this argument and that they went on with it anyway. It may be the first time that it's ever been brought up. That's the first thing. The second thing under 1.1.106, yes, it says that a person includes a political subdivision. That political subdivision, based on the case law that your own city attorney is using against me in a different case, says that the city is the entity, not city administration. The uh, appellant in this particular case is the city administration. It is not the city. And we have no indication whatsoever anywhere in the code that the city administration has the right to bring this action. Number one, there's no authority for it. At least I haven't seen it. I couldn't find it if it's there. Uh, and the one person who had the authority was divested of that authority just by filing the appeal. And that's clearly in your own city code. So whether he's a person or not is a matter that you need to consider. Whether or not there's any presidential value, I would argue there's none. And number two, finally, he's been divested of any jurisdiction that he had by uh, 7.5104. Okay, Mr. Andrews. 
I would also bring the council's attention to um, uh, a section of the planning code that deals with applications, and this is um, another reasoning by analogy. Um, in 7.5.202, it talks about applications for amendments to the comprehensive uh, plan, and it, it states in there that the application um, shall be uh, made by the property owners or lessees, their applicants, persons who have contracted to purchase the property, the city council, Planning Commission, Historic Preservation Board, Manager of Development Services, or a City Department Division Section or other appointed board. So that's for the comprehensive plan. That's a completely different section. It does not involve appeals. It has to do with a completely different set of facts, circumstances, and duties of this body. It's got nothing to do with this. Nothing. Okay. Can I come back. Thank you, President King. Um, the only thing we would add to this is that, you know, a discussion that's being, or a legal argument that may be made in litigation that's wholly separate and unrelated to this is probably not something that we should focus the attention on today. Um, our view is still that the zoning, whenever a zoning official's decision has been overturned by the Planning Commission, the zoning official is always going to be an interested person in trying, to, in trying to get resolution of an issue before city council. And therefore, he would be an appropriate person to bring an appeal from a planning commission decision that was adverse or found his action to be erroneous. Okay. I guess we have a decision to make whether or not we have the proper person bringing the appeal. So, let's have council want to have a discussion. Councilmember Miller. Well, I guess this is sort of unprecedented. We don't do summary judgments, but it seems like the point of law is important. And I had asked this question that earlier, not knowing that it was going to be brought up. But the memo that we got is the City of Colorado Springs administration is hereby filing an appeal. And, and do we can we get a, a legal ruling on whether or not that constitutes? The, who is allowed to make an appeal under 7.9.506B4. Uh, the city's position is that the appeal is, is properly taken, and that's consistent with the opinion given to you by the city attorney today. Well, the, the opinion that was given verbally today at the lunch meeting? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Excuse me, but when he started... Excuse me. He started, he polled the council to see whether or not there had been any ex parte discussions about this matter. And now we're finding that there was a lunch meeting where this was discussed. I, I, I don't know how we can proceed under those circumstances. Make if everyone, who was at the council meeting? Who was at the lunch meeting? This wasn't specific to this address, it was specific to the code itself about whether who a person is. And that was the question that was asked. It was I would like to poll who was at the, count, at the lunch meeting. Most of the council was there. We have a council. Was that lunch meeting posted? Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. And the public was invited? Yes. yes. Okay. And this uh, was discussed? No. Let me, let me jump on here for a second. We did not discuss this particular case at lunch. Mm -hmm. It was a completely unrelated discussion re re uh, referring to legal representation. Okay. So, so this was sure. absolutely not discussed. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's not the, the the question was asked and related in relation to city code seven point nine point five oh six. The specific case was not brought up, but the question of a person who the, who a person is was brought up. I did not feel that it, that it qualified as ex parte communication because it, this particular case was not discussed. But I was asking question about code period. Okay. 